Well, I want to uh, start out by thanking you for coming out on uh, such an important Sunday that you all were able to actually come and, you know, and bring yourself when we know that, you know, Super Bowl is more popular than God, you know, so, so I, want to, I want to acknowledge you all for showing up. I'm Earl Purdy. Welcome to A Course in Miracles. Those of you on Facebook Live, I want to thank you for tuning in on such an auspicious occasion. And uh, don't forget that you don't have to believe these ideas. You don't have to accept these ideas. You don't have to welcome these ideas. Okay, all right. So, some of these ideas you will find hard to believe. And they admit that some may even be quite startling. That's right, that's right. You're not asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. The truth is, using it will show you that it's true. Using it that, using it will show you that it's true. Because if I actually use the idea, I feel better. So that's what it means. When it says if you use it, you'll see that it's true. That if you actually use this viewpoint, you'll have more peace. And don't forget, don't forget, the goal of the Course in Miracles is not for you to come here and become enlightened and to have all knowledge. Okay, I know, I know. It's, it, this is not the purpose of A Course in Miracles is to entertain our intellect. It says the goal of The Course in Miracles is peace of mind. That you want to study the Course so that you will have more peace of mind. And then when you have peace of mind, that, that then it leads to wisdom and knowledge. Because at the point you have peace of mind, it says you can hear the voice of God or the voice of truth in yourself. In yourself. It says the reason why we don't hear God's guidance or spirit's guidance is because we're constantly listening to what we're telling ourselves. That, that, that's what most people are doing all day long. They're just listening to themselves. And, and so he says, well, that's why things have been the way they've been for you. It's, just in case you're wondering. So I'm not trying to convert you. All I'm doing is delivering a message. I am a messenger. I didn't write it, so I have I feel no need to defend it. Okay, I'm not going to analyze it. I want to see what is the message the Spirit is trying to give us today. And we're going to be in the Course in Miracles text, the Foundation for Inner Peace version. And we're going to be on chapter 14, chapter 14, chapter 14, section 2. Chapter 14, section 2, called The Happy Learner. The Happy Learner. It's on page 272, page 272, chapter 14, The Happy Learner. The Happy Learner. What kind of learner? Happy. The Happy Learner. Now, the Course in Miracles defines learning as perception. It says perception is learning. So another term for learning from a Course in Miracles perspective is perception. So the happy perceiver. The happy learner is the happy perceiver. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the paragraph, and then I'm going to go through the paragraph, and then I'm going to go through the paragraph. Okay? I'm not interested in speed. I'm not interested in speed. I'm interested in hearing and remembering what I'm hearing. Okay, so I'll do a little dramatic music. Okay, that's good. Okay, we'll do that again. Yeah, put a little funk in there. Okay. You hear for the first time you're sufficiently scared yet? <laughs> Have I terrified you enough yet? You know? And he got on hard glasses. I know this is it. I, this is, he's going to break out the Kool-Aid. <laughs> the Holy Spirit needs a happy learner. Love needs a happy learner. In whom love's mission can be happily accomplished. You who are steadfastly devoted to misery 
must first recognize that you are miserable <laughs> and not happy. In case you don't know it, you're not really happy, you're really miserable. This is really up, isn't it? The Holy Spirit, which is love, cannot teach without this contrast, for you believe that misery is happiness. You believe that misery is happiness. This has so confused you that you have undertaken to learn. You have undertaken to learn to do what you can never do, believing that unless you can learn to do what you can never do, which is to make misery happiness, you will not be happy. You do not realize, you do not realize that the foundation on which this most peculiar learning goal depends means absolutely nothing. Yet, this insanity may still make sense to you. Have faith in nothing and you will find the treasure that you see. Have faith in nothing and you will find the nothing that you see. All right? Now guess what? Yet you will add another burden to your already burdened mind. You will believe that nothing is of value and you will value something that's really nothing. A little piece of glass you will value, a speck of dust, a, a body, or a war are one to you. For if you value one thing made of nothing, you will believe that what is nothing can be precious. You will believe that you can learn how to make the un true true you're trying to learn how to make the untrue true you're trying to learn how to make the untrue true you've been trying to make fear true trying to make anger true trying to make separation true trying to make perception true trying to make form true trying to make guilt true trying to make lack true trying to make sickness true You've been trying to make the untrue true. Stop trying to make the untrue true. You have to stop trying to learn how to make loneliness, anger, guilt, sickness, sadness, depression, separation true. Holy Spirit needs a happy learner. Love needs a happy learner. God needs a happy learner. Spirit needs a happy learner. Are you willing to be a happy learner? Yeah. Yeah. I'm willing to be a happy learner. Yeah. Okay. So spirit needs a happy learner. Love needs a happy learner. If we're really going to get this, love needs a happy learner. Spirit needs a happy learner. We need to be what? Happy, happy learners. learners, okay? Because it's in the happy learner that God's mission can be happily accomplished. The mission of love can be happily accomplished in a happy person. Mm -hmm. It's like a sad person is not a good demonstration of joy. Mm -hmm. Okay, a sick person is not a good demonstration of health. A fearful yeah. person isn't a good demonstration of love. Somebody so poor they can't pay attention. <laughs> it's not the best demonstration of the idea of abundance. So if I'm going to be a demonstrator that love, truth, and spirit is the way to go, then I have to be exemplifying it and demonstrating it by being a loving, happy person myself. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Absolutely. Then it says, you, in case you wonder who you are, you who are, you who, it says right here, <laughs> you who are not regularly devoted to misery, steadfastly. Wow. He says, we'll, step, we, we'll stick to our misery and want to be right, even if it's making us miserable. He says, we, we, it's a part of us that's just steadfastly devoted 
to be miserable and upset about something all the time. Have you noticed that if it's not one thing, it's, it's another? another. <laughs> Has there ever been a time in your life that you felt completely free of concerns and worries at, at, on all levels in every kind of way? <laughs> not really, if you be <laughs> honest and not in yeah. total denial. Yeah. Okay, those of you online, thank you, my mighty companions, for tuning in to the Course in Miracles. Uh, uh, I always check out all your comments later if I don't get a chance to do it while I'm doing the live presentation. You can also share the video online right now by sharing right next to where it says comments. So I appreciate if you do that. You share this, this live broadcast on your timeline. Okay, so... So this, well, what is the first thing you need to recognize if you're going to be a happy learner? The first thing you need to recognize if you're going to be a happy learner is that you're miserable. What? The course in, uh, let me explain that. The Course in Miracles does not count joy and happiness that comes and goes as real happiness. Mm -hmm. So you can, can, sometimes we have to understand how the Course in Miracles phrases things because of the sound negative if you don't. To the course, you're not really happy until you always are. Mm -hmm. Until the happiness never ends, and the only change that it makes at all is that it continues to expand. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I'm happy in the morning, I'm sad in the evening, I'm joyful today, next time you see me, I, I feel depressed. The course says that's just pleasant forms of fear, mm -hmm. which I think is an interesting way to put it. <laughs> it says real happiness, happiness that comes from God, happiness that comes from reality, Happiness that comes from spirit does not come and go. Mm -hmm. So when most people tell you they're having a great day, they, what they're saying is, it looked like a lot of the things that I wanted to have happen today went the way that I wanted it to go. That's not real happiness. Because if any of those things are taken away, you're not happy. Mm -hmm. So what we call happiness, the Course in Miracles calls fear that we like. <laughs> Sounds like my... First marriage. Okay, now, that's my only marriage. That's my first marriage. That's my only marriage. That's my only marriage. That's enough. <laughs> that's once is enough. You can do it. Like, uh, uh, old, like old show said, you know, if you do it right, you only need to do it once. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if you really did it, anything really, really completely, you would need to do it anymore because that desire would be satisfied. Mm -hmm. And then you move on to something else even greater. That was what makes total sense to me. Uh, like Spirit was telling me the other day, you know, have you noticed you don't notice air? And he's like, you know, I was like, what do you mean? Because it talks to me. You know, it's like, well, you won't notice air until there's a lack of it. And then all of a sudden, you'll be real focused on air, right? So everything is supposed to be to the level that you don't think about it. That's how you know you have enough of anything is when you don't have to think about it. You see, so if you were really in your natural state of abundance, you'd never think about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you were really in a a, 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 an experience of total love, you wouldn't wonder and be seeking it. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so you know when you got the right amount of anything because you won't be thinking about it because it's there. Mm -hmm. All right, so whatever you think about is what you think you don't have. Mm -hmm. Think about that. <laughs> Can we? Yes. So then it says, the Holy Spirit, your inner teacher, uh, cannot teach without this contrast. And so what contrast? You recognize, and first of all, that you have not experienced true happiness yet. Mm -hmm. And he says, we believe that misery is happiness. So he says, what we do is we we'll call some aspect of misery happiness mm -hmm. and then tell ourselves we're happy. Wow. And that's what we do. Why, how do you know it's not true happiness? Because all of the things that we think makes us happy here are the same things that can cause us pain. The exact same things that we think can cause us joy becomes the same. You know, like that, that fifth piece of cake is not going to be pleasurable usually. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the same thing that you turned on. Oh, I'm so glad to be dancing when I get to the club at like 10 o'clock, you know what I'm saying, then 12, 30. <laughs> <laughs> same thing, right? Yeah. See, what we call happiness, it's the same thing as pain. The Course says pain and pleasure are exactly the same thing. They're exactly the same thing. There's something to make you think you're a body. Because what? First I was moving in my body. Then I was hurting in my body. 
See, so the Course in Miracles says anything that has the same purpose is the same. So who are you the same as? You're the same as anybody that shares your purpose. So a holy relationship, the Course says, is a relationship where you have a common purpose and a common state of mind. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the same kind of personality. Mm -hmm. But you have the same purpose. Right. So that should be the first thing you look for in any relationship that you form with anybody is do you have a common purpose? Mm -hmm. And is that common purpose love? Is that common purpose peace? That should be the common purpose, mm -hmm. is peace. Not the purpose of, you're going to validate me and you're going to make me happy. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not. Mm -hmm. that, that's not going to work. Yeah. So then it says, this has so confused you. Then you go, well, what has so confused me? That I'm confused about what's real joy and what's pain. I'm really confused about what real love is and what's not real love. He says, this has so confused you that you have undertaken to learn what? To do what you can never do. Believing that unless you learn to do what you will never do, you won't be happy. You see, see, unless you realize you'll never make misery happen. You see, it's like, I don't like you, and I think my goal is to make myself like you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to change misery into happiness. Um, I think my happiness is outside of myself, so I'm going to continue to look outside of myself for happiness because I think that's a person is going to do it, a situation is going to do it, a circumstance is going to do it. So I'm trying to make myself happy in a way that will never truly make me happy. He says that's what we're always doing. We're always doing what? Trying to learn to do what we can never do. What? Make misery happiness. Mm -hmm. People study the course, they read a sentence, and then they immediately try to go to their own wisdom to figure it out and don't pay attention to the fact that it means what it says and it's right there on the page in front of you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I say I don't analyze in my course class because it's ridiculous. It's right there. For instance, love needs a happy learner. That's how I can accomplish my goal with you all if you're happy. What's hard to understand about that? You're steadfastly devoted to misery. What does that mean? You don't recognize the true difference between misery and happiness, love and fear. And you're so confused about it that you've undertaken to do what you can never do, which is to make something that's not real, that's not true happiness, <coughs> become happiness. That's what it says right there. He said, believe it unless you learn to do it, you won't be happy. Unless I learn how to make everything outside of myself some kind of way make me happy, I don't think I'll be happy. So that house is going to do it, that car is going to do it, mm -hmm. uh, some person is going to do it, some career is going to do it. See, I make up what I think is going to make me happy, and then I pursue it. Mm -hmm. And then I make up the next thing that I think is going to make me happy, and I pursue it. Mm -hmm. Then I, I call it my goals. <laughs> Right. I, I get up in the morning, I decide how the day should go, and then I try to manipulate and control everything and everybody to act out what I want them to act out to make my day happy. And in most cases, I don't even ask them if they want the role I've assigned to them. And then I say they don't support me when they don't do it. Then I get angry, and then I go to therapy. And I don't realize I did all this in my mind and the other person didn't have nothing to do with it. You never asked me if I wanted to do what you were thinking I should do. Then you say you don't believe in telepathy, but you expect me to read your mind. And so you're upset because I didn't just know what you wanted me to do. And is that familiar? Mm -hmm. Right? So the Course in Miracles says, you don't realize the foundation on which this most peculiar learning goal depends means absolutely nothing. It might still make sense to you. That's right. We wouldn't keep doing it if it didn't still make sense to us. Right? Then it says, have faith in nothing. Have faith in illusion. Have faith in false ideas. Have faith in fear. That's what the Course calls nothing. And you'll find the treasure you seek. Whatever you have faith in, you're going to find. If you have faith in the, the insanity of your brother, you're going to find the insanity. If you have faith in fear, you're going to see fear. If you have faith in love, you're going to see love. Whatever you have faith in, you're going to find it. If you believe all men are no good, you're going to only attract no good men. If you believe all women are no good, that's the ones you're going you're gonna to have. Why? Because that's what you have faith in, so that's what you're going to see. That's what you're going to create in your own mind. That's what's going to happen. Is this really uh, rocket science so far? Okay. Then it goes on to say, yet you will just do what? You'll add another burden to your already burdened mind. I, I'm already burdened, and now I'm going to do something else that's not true and it's not real, and it's not loving, which is just going to add another burden to my already burdened mind. Yeah. And you need to analyze what they just said. Then it goes on to say, you will believe that nothing is of value and you will value it. And then it goes on to tell you what it means. It says, for example, 
you will value a piece of glass. I can think of a piece of glass that I'm valuing right now that I caused myself some I, I caused myself some upset about a crack wrench shield. Mm -hmm. That's a piece of glass, right? Uh, it used to be, no, I'm not going to say that. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it was something that rhymed with glass. <laughs> Instead of a piece of glass, it was some other. Okay, you got it? Okay. All right. Now, <laughs> a, a speck of dust, a body, or a war will all be the same thing to you. Something that you value, something that you think is real, especially the body. Mm -hmm. And so the Course in Miracles says, for if you value one thing made of nothing, you will believe that nothing can be precious. And of course it's saying that's what you all do. You believe something that is not real and permanent is precious. Mm -hmm. There's not a single thing you see that will last. Mm -hmm. Everything you see is perishable yep. and there's nothing you see that will last. Mm -hmm. I defy anyone in here to tell me anything they see with their physical senses that's going to be eternal. Yeah. Okay, waiting. <laughs> There's nothing you see that's not perishable. You know, no matter how long it live, it can be, it can live a minute. It's funny, the scientists were saying in the paper just the other day about this galaxy that was going to collide in this other galaxy in only 300 million years from now. And that was really word. <laughs> just the other day, I was messed up. Right? So it's even saying galaxies are going to perish. Your body is going to perish. It's a piece of black. So he, that's what it means when it says you are valuing things that are made out of nothing and you think nothing is precious. But it also says the reason why we value temporary things is because we think we are temporary. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make any sense to value something that's eternal when I'm not. Why, do, why should I value something that's going to last forever if I think I'm not? So, so we value the temporary because we think we are temporary. So we should try to get as much temporary stuff as we can before our temporary physical life ends. I mean, that's just to be straight up. I mean, I mean you can look at it from a metaphysical perspective and you can say now, well, I don't think that, you know, I think things are going to last. Okay, we get you. We get you. Okay, okay. Okay, now. <laughs> I tell people that friends of mine who are in the metaphysics and new thoughts, don't use yourself as an example of what's normal. Because they, you know, they use it all. Well, that's, I don't feel that way. You are not normal. And all your relatives tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't, you can't, I can, we can't use each other as a, 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 as a gauge of what the average person thinks and believes. Come on, get real. Get real. You know, and then it says, if you value one thing made of nothing, you will believe that what? Nothing can be precious. You know, oh, I just love this diamond. Oh, my God. You know, uh, and that you can learn. At the end, of course, always wraps it up. It says, what, basically what I'm saying is, you believe you can learn how to make the untrue true. He said, that's the last sentence says it all. We believe we can make things that are not true, true. That's what we get upset about. I make up a story in my mind about something, and then I think it's true. That's one example. There are many examples. There are always other ways of looking at things other than the way that I'm sharing. Okay? Yeah. I'm never talking to you from the perspective that my way of looking at anything is the only way to look at it. But I'm sharing the way that it's being led to come through me right now, and I'm trying to, if you follow along the book, I'm basically saying what it's saying. <laughs> You know, I'm not standing back, well, let me tell you what Earl thinks the Course is saying, you know, because I'm Earl. <laughs> you know. First paragraph, any questions or comments about what the first paragraph was saying? So I'm hearing that on some level we need to believe that we can be happy. That's the, that's, we, before we can even get started, mm -hmm. that's the direction we have to move in, the direction that, and because the Course in Miracles, I'm like 30 something years, I'm going to be almost 40 years of studying the Course, so I try to bring that into the class, right? Mm -hmm. So what it, there's, a, there's a place in the Course where it says, all you're being asked to do is what? Decide on the direction you want to go in. Mm -hmm. He said, that's how spirit is trying to get any of us to do, to go, I want to go in the direction of truth. I want to go in the direction of love. I want to go into the direction of unity and oneness. I'm willing. Then he says, everything else will be taken care of. But what we try to focus on is the how. And what the Course says we should be focusing on is the what. The what. 
not the how. The how will be provided if you get sincere about the what. Yeah. If you really want love and peace, but no kidding, no jiving around, not just saying it because today you're having a bad day. Yeah. You know, but you're, you really have set awakening and love and truth as your purpose. Everything else will be given to you, including what you need to be sustained while you are here. He says it will be given Amen. to you. Amen. You will be taken care of yes. if you are really about your function. Mm -hmm. But you can't fool spirit. So be honest with yourself <laughs> about whether it's God you want or you want God to get you that cock. And that's why you went to God. <laughs> You got, you know, the course says God is a means and an end. Uh -huh. God, love is the means to love. Yeah. You see, freedom is the means to freedom. Yeah. You know, but you can't make the, you can't, you, you can't look at God like I used to say in the, many of my classes in the past. People treat the creator as if the creator is like a genie. That you do a gene. It's like you rub the bottle and then you make three wishes. Yeah. The course of miracles says we make up our mind and then we ask for guidance. Right? We sit down and decide who's going to make us happy, what's going to make us happy, how it's supposed to happen. Then we go to God to get our plan acted out. And then if our plan isn't acted out, then we say it's not true. It's not real. Well, as you wake up spiritually and you become more enlightened, you will be thankful that your plans didn't work out. It'll be just the opposite. You'll be like, oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I didn't get that job. Or I'm so glad that relationship ended. Oh, I'm so glad that I thought that was the worst thing that I got laid off and I ended up coming to Colorado. That was really the best thing for me, and I probably wouldn't have done that if I had not gotten laid off. So everything you may be using right now that you see is disappointing you is a doorway to God consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's trying to realign you in a direction that your ego doesn't know about. So anybody else? Yeah. I'm realizing that I've looked at um, the happy happiness in my life from a lack perspective mm -hmm. instead of an abundance perspective. Mm -hmm. So I'm realizing at a new level that I have, how I have looked outside of myself for those happy moments to occur to increase my overall happiness. And now I realize that my job is to, and what I, I want to <coughs> take on is to just practice cultivating that happiness all the time in my life. You know, just practicing Strengthening that that muscle, and then forming relationships with people who want to join you in that goal. Thank you. I'm gonna keep saying that the, the, the spiritual path is never a path you do alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the ego path. So if you think you're gonna do it by yourself, you and your ego. Mm -hmm. I just be straight up with you. You you you're not going to accomplish enlightenment through your own personal efforts all by yourself. It ain't set up like that. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Saw so somebody else ahead there. Thank you, brother. Yeah. yeah, what I've learned is we need to, or I need to, all of us do, is set our intention. And when you set your intention, you state what it is, your attention um, is what you focus on to get us to our intention. That which we focus on is what we draw to us. So if our attention is based on our intention, mm -hmm. then that helps to draw us to us closer and the key is to not ask why just let go and let God which we have to do a lot of spiritual work to get to the point we can do yeah. that's one of those statements it's easy to say yeah. but it doesn't mean yeah. anything unless you've done a lot of spiritual work to get to the point you can say let go yeah. and let God and it has meaning to you right. that's what I have to always watch after having studied and taught for so long is that things yeah. that, that I can say that sounds very matter of factly I forget that when I first heard that concept it was really a stretch, mm -hmm. and I had to go through a lot of personal attention and study until I really could let go and let God. But well, when you find you know. that it doesn't work the other way, then it's kind of easy. Well, that's what's so cool about it is that the Course says spirit is happy when you fail. Yeah. <laughs> because that puts you one step closer to turning to it. You need to see your plans that are not based on the truth not work out. Uh -huh. yeah. that's, that's a good thing. Even though your ego, the part of you that has made the plan, mm -hmm. is very PO'd about that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was just going to say what I really got from that paragraph is I want to be really honest about the fact that my plans and designs lead to misery 
and and away from peace of mind and I have to start viewing misery as being lack of peace of mind mm -hmm. because I can have what you were saying as far as pain and pleasure being linked because they have the same purpose is that even like having that excited kind of anxiety that I think we're especially used to in this culture as like instant gratification seekers mm -hmm. is I have to realize that's as much of a lack of peace of mind as things that I can directly look at as misery. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Chris. So I'm reminded, well, actually, you reminded me again of one of the things uh, you say that I'd like, I'd like to memorize. As you said, that um, the desire of the goal or for the goal will carry us past all obstacles that come up uh, to oppose us. Yes. The, the Course says the attraction of the thing beyond the obstacle will pull you past the obstacles. So, so your desire has to be greater than any obstacle that may come up in terms of, in other words, my own peace must be more important to me than my fear, my anger, my anxiety. So remember, remember this, Course in Miracles students, when the Course, in, the Course in Miracles is primarily focused on our perception and our mind. So when it's talking, it's not talking about material things. It's talking about states of consciousness. It's talking about perception. So when it says go beyond an obstacle, it's talking about go beyond your belief in anger, guilt, grievances, separation, thinking your body, thinking your temper. Because it says the body, the world is neutral. Nothing in the world is inherently making you happy or unhappy. So that's not even the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is that state of mind that I'm in, in any relationship I'm in, or in any situation that I'm in. That's what makes me happy or unhappy, is my interpretation of the situation that I'm in. Not the, not the, car, the car is not going to in and of itself make me happy. Mm -hmm. But that's not saying it's not nice to have a cool car. But it is saying I'll enjoy the car if I'm happy. Mm -hmm. The car isn't making me happy. I'm a happy person in my car. Mm -hmm. My mate isn't making me happy. I'm a happy person with my mate. Mm -hmm. See the difference? My clothes aren't making me happy. I'm happy in my clothes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm happy out of my clothes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Now, so what about you? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Some people say, I, 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 have, I do sexual in your end. No, I just say what the hell I want to say. Okay. I don't, say, I don't censor myself. I just say what comes up to me to say. And anybody that don't like it, hopefully they'll leave. That's what you get when you start to love yourself. You don't love me and you want to go, uh, I will want to have a party. Uh, you know, because I don't want anybody around me that don't want to be around me. Mm -hmm. you, you follow me? Yeah. When you love yourself, you don't want anybody with you who don't appreciate you. Yeah. So I never run after people now. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, you, if you don't like me, I'm not going to try to convince you to because I do. Mm -hmm. And because I do, I attract more people that do. Mm -hmm. So I don't have time to run after somebody who's obviously misperceiving my incredible qualities. Mm -hmm. And that's the way you should feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. That's not arrogant. It's arrogant when you think you're not incredible. Because that means you think your interpretation of yourself is truer than God's. Mm -hmm. God is saying you are a priceless treasure, an incredible being. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, oh, no, I'm insecure and afraid and nothing goes right for me. That's you being arrogant. Mm -hmm. Because you're telling yourself that what you think about yourself is truer than what love thinks about you. Uh -huh. Think about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. That's the Course in Miracles definition of arrogant. Mm -hmm. You're arrogant every time you're putting yourself down. You're mm -hmm. arrogant person. Mm -hmm. You think you're not loved, you're being arrogant. You are loved. Mm -hmm. But you think your assessment of yourself is truer than what the truth is teaching. And then you go out and form relationships that validate you're not valuable. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why you're with that person that never tells you they love you. You don't. They're just witnessing back to you what you think about yourself. Mm -hmm. And you're looking for them to make you feel good. They're, they're there as a witness that you should change your mind about yourself. And they're doing a damn good job, some of them. They, they're like focused on their purpose. You know? You know? Brother. <laughs> so for me, um, what I'm hearing is whenever we're not feeling happy or totally at peace, we place value in the wrong thing. We're, we're valuing the valueless. That's right. Yeah. A absolutely. 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 All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so the Holy Spirit seeing where you are but knowing you're somewhere else. 
I love that line. Love seeing where you are, but knowing you are somewhere else. Love begins its lesson in simplicity with the fundamental teaching that truth is true. The truth is true. The, tr this, the truth you're studying is true. The truth you're studying is true. The truth you are studying is true. That's the, the course says what? That is the lesson in what? Simplicity. Simplicity. Then it says, do you know what's the hardest lesson you will ever learn? And in the end, the only lesson you will learn, ever learn is that what you're studying is true. That's going to be the hardest lesson you ever learn, is that what we are learning is true. And that's true. <laughs> this is the hardest lesson we ever learn, is that what we are learning is true, right? Then the Course in Miracles says, simplicity is very difficult for twisted minds. I want you to hear that because that's hilarious if you really hear it. <laughs> How do you know if you have a twisted mind when someone tells you something that's very simple, like you won't make what doesn't last last? Uh, you, you won't be happy when you're miserable. And you can't use the thing that's making you miserable and try to turn that misery into happiness if it's something that's not true or real. Mm -hmm. Then it says, consider all the distortions you have made of nothing. Consider all the strange forms and feelings and actions and reactions you wove it out of nothing. Let me give you an example that brings it home for me. I come in here and I say, you don't like me. Then I make up a story in my mind about why you don't like me and how you don't like me. Then I treat you like you don't like me. And what I really did was I took strange feelings and actions and reactions that I've woven out of nothing. You didn't do anything to me. I made it all up in my mind. I took nothing. And I'm expecting you to prove to me that I'm wrong. I made it all up, but now you've got to convince me that I'm wrong about what I made up about you in the first place. Have you ever had anybody do that? That they were upset with you, and you really had literally done absolutely nothing, and they wanted you to apologize. Wow. And then you would go something like, I'm sorry if, I, if, if, you know, if something I did upset you. You didn't do nothing to upset them. They upset them. That you would just, if you were being peaceful and loving and going about your business and doing your thing and they're all upset with you, they wove something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. they are, especially if you know your purpose. I always tell people, if you know you mean no harm and you know your purpose is love and you know you're not attacking someone mm -hmm. and they got all these projections that they're putting on you, that you are not responsible for what somebody else is thinking and feeling. You are not responsible for somebody else's feelings. You are not responsible for someone else's feelings. You are not responsible for someone else's feelings. Yes. Now, that's great until my feelings get hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I get mad. See, that sounds good until I think that somebody has upset me. So if I'm a person sitting up here right now that I think it was my mama's fault, my dad's fault, my boss's fault, my boyfriend's fault, my girlfriend's fault, somebody else's fault, then you don't like a class like this because... I'm telling you those people are not responsible for the way you're feeling right now. You are responsible for the way that you're feeling right now mm -hmm. because it's the way you're looking at it that's making you feel the way you feel right now. Mm -hmm. So the Course in Miracles is always telling us that the contrast, he says, I love this, he says, nothing is so alien to you as what? The simple truth. The alien is What's alien to us? Simple. The simple truth. And nothing are you less inclined to listen to. <laughs> he says, nothing are we less inclined to listen to than the truth. Mm. You want to see people get mad? That's Tell them true. the truth. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not really responsible for how you're feeling right now. I, I, I didn't cause that at all. <laughs> and I could be happy without you. <laughs> what? Because what? <laughs> as a matter of fact, it seems to be the key to my happiness. <laughs> and then there are some people that support your happiness mm -hmm. and have you increase your joy. When you come together, you feel better. Yeah. When you walk away, you feel energized. Yeah. You're glad you were around them. Yeah. Who are the people that God did not send you to help, according to the courts? The ones who you feel drained when you're trying to help them. Yes. What? The ones that you feel all drained 
when you're trying to help them, those are not the ones ultimately that you are the you are not the one that's going to be used to really heal that person. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, you can tell your child something and they never listen to you, and somebody else can say the same thing and they'll go, "Oh yeah, I got it." Right. So if you would let go of your ego need to be the one that gets them to get it. Mm -hmm. So the universe might send somebody else to them to get what you've been trying to get them to get. Then you get the result because they changed their mind and you benefit. Unless you're so deep in your ego, you think it's got to be you that they always listen to. That's deep. You be with that for a minute. I'm the parent, so I've got to be the one who makes sure my child gets everything. You know that you're the last one they want to listen to. So you're the slow way. You might want to be open to the universe healing them in whatever way it can as fast as possible through whatever people, situation, and circumstance that can bring them to enlightenment. You know, if I wanted, if I was a person and I was looking for a relationship, I would just ask for the Holy Spirit to send to me the person who really loves me. I would not put a body on that. I would not put an appearance on that. I would not put what they're supposed to look like because I, I might miss the person. Because I've already decided what it should look like. Mm -hmm. And they could be right in front of my face. And I'd be saying, oh, I wish I, somebody really valued me and loved me. They could be sitting right in front of your face. Mm -hmm. But they don't look like who you think they're supposed to look like. And they're not talking the way you think they should talk. That's why they might be the ones that make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> because, you're, because of your own track record. Yes. Mm -hmm. With using your own choices. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Because think, if I'm happy with you... Then, like people say, well, suppose they, you know, well, suppose they don't look like what I want them to look like. That I said someone that you were happy with. Because if you're happy, then that would have to be perfect for you in that moment. Think about it. Or you, you wouldn't choose to be happy. So you don't have to worry about that. They have to be in the right form if you are happy. I've often said to myself, when I really say to myself, I'm happy than I've ever been and I'm ecstatically in bliss, I wonder who will be around me, where I'll be physically located, and what will be happening. I always say that to myself. Hmm. When I actually make that statement that I am completely in perfect happiness and joy, yeah. what will be around me? Mm -hmm. Who will be around me? Mm -hmm. And it's fun to think like that. Start focusing on content and not on form mm -hmm. and you'll get what you want faster. Yeah. Because then you'll let it come to you in the way it can come to you quickest rather than the way you've decided. Mm -hmm. right. These are little tips. Uh -huh. It's you. little tips. All right, Spirit. Okay. It says the contrast of the difference between what's true and what's not is perfectly apparent, but you don't see it. Mm -hmm. I said the difference between what's true and what's not is obvious, of course, the miracle says to us, but y'all don't see it. Y'all don't see it. You, you don't see the difference between love and fear. Someone who loves you will not limit you, mm -hmm. will not put a guilt trip on you, will not attack you. Right. End of story. If love is being expressed, anger isn't. Yes, but. Yes, but. Oh, yeah, if I've been spending my whole life trying to love people who attack me and angry at me and I've been doing the same thing to them, of course I'm not going to want to hear that. Because that's opposite to the way I am. I don't know how to do no attack, total freedom, loving you no matter what. So now it sounds like you've given me an impossible task. Good, I did give you an impossible task because maybe that'll make your butt turn to me. Mm. It's what spirit said. Maybe that'll make you open up to something greater than you. I'm going to constantly present you with stuff you can't do by yourself mm -hmm. so that you will reach out. Yes. You know, it, it, think about that. Yeah. He says if you, if you choose to do something you can't do alone, you're no longer alone because the universe always meets the need. Mm -hmm. So if I go for I want to love you all unconditionally, I don't know how to do that in every situation. So just by me having that goal, I've automatically called on assistance. Mm -hmm. yes. But the minute you say, I'm going to do it, I'm going to be self-sufficient, I'm going to handle it all on my own, the universe says yes, then you looks like you're having to do everything by yourself and you're complaining, I have to do everything by myself. <laughs> That's why you're doing everything by yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you believe you're supposed to do everything by yourself. Because that's what being an adult means. I'm autonomous. I'm self-sufficient. I do it on my own. I don't need nobody. And then nobody shows up. You go, where are everybody when I need them? <laughs> well, you've already decided you got to do it yourself. The universe always says, yes. I'm loved. Yes. Nobody loves me. Yes. I'm brilliant. Yes. I'm stupid. Yes. The universe always says, yes. Yes. 
I can have a relationship that works in beautiful ways that I never imagined. Yes. I can have abundance of beyond my wildest dreams. Yes. I'm broke. Yes. I'm sick. Yes. Nobody loves me. Yes. The universe says yes. So you're calling for help. And calling for help is calling for the holy, eternal, loving presence. H-E-L-P, or I like to say happy, eternal, loving presence. I'm calling for help. I'm calling for the happy, eternal, loving presence called God. I'm calling for help. I'm calling for help. So the Court says, the simple and the obvious are not apparent to those who make palaces in royal robes of nothing, <laughs> believing they are kings with golden crowns because of all the palaces and royal robes. I love it when people think people are automatically important and valuable because they're wealthy materially. Mm -hmm. That is so hilarious to me. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh, she's worth $2 million and he's worth $3 million and She's worth $2 billion. Yeah. It's like, and so therefore, you therefore are somehow better than me because you have more paper strips and metal discs and plastic. <laughs> <coughs> the course called money, paper, paper strips, strips and metal disc. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Paper strips and metal. So I started calling money paper strips and metal discs. And it would come to me yeah. faster <laughs> when I did that. Because my mind is already programmed to think it's easy to have paper. Mm -hmm. It is already thinks it's easy to have metal disc. You know, and then, and, and plastic. I'm good at plastic. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, fantastic plastic. <laughs> That's my superhero name. Okay. <laughs> right, so money is what? Paper strips and metal discs and plastic. It's more and more every day, it's digits. It's just not even like anything in your pocket now. It's just digits. You know what I'm saying? I whip my phone out and then just aim it at something that pays for stuff. Boom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's, it's now easier than ever to receive money mm -hmm. than ever before. Not just pay bills, but there, it's easier for things to get to you now. Yeah. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Think about that. You know, we are on a level of consciousness that we've opened up many, many channels that we're not taking advantage of. Right. It's actually easier. But I always say, whatever I have comes from God. Whatever I have comes from my creator. And everything else is a channel. I'm very grateful to you when you share with me, when I, when I teach and do these classes, and you choose to do that from a place of, of joy to do that. I thank you for being willing to be a channel. You know, but I never mistake where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. It's coming from God. You know what I'm saying? Because if you, if you pin it on a certain person, then you're going to be looking for that person to do that for you, right. and you're going to imprison them. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, if you, think, if, yeah. if you think I'm the source of your love, and you yeah. couldn't be loved without me, you're going to be jealous and possessive, and you're going to feel threatened by anybody you see me give any attention to. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as having a deep love for somebody that you feel jealousy with. That's right. mm -hmm. Ain't no, no such monsters that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm so jealous because I love you. No, I'm so jealous because I fear you. I fear losing you. Mm -hmm. I have fears. That's why I don't want you to look at anybody but me. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm terrified. I don't think you love me. Right? And you don't think I love you because you're just as jealous as I am. Right? So you all will probably get along. <laughs> because it's hard not to get along with somebody who's just like you. You can kind of relate to some. If I'm jealous and you're jealous, we can relate to the jealousy. And we could probably work through it together because we both are, both have that same type of call for love. Mm -hmm. It's more difficult if I appear to be not jealous at all, and you are. Then it would seem like you're somehow inferior to me in some way. Mm -hmm. So actually, it's not a bad thing to be with somebody that's like you, even if y'all got the same dysfunctions, because it would help. <laughs> because it would help you. Because you'd be able to relate to each other. Mm -hmm. You'd be able to work it out. Because y'all, I, I can relate to how that feels. Yes. I remember the first time I had my first real, what motivated me so much in the course and, and teaching me how to go beyond jealousy and stuff like that was because, because of one of the deepest stabs of jealousy that I happened to ever feel on uh, September 3rd, 1980. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just sort of trying to remember it. I don't really remember it. <laughs> but it was like somebody, said, how many of y'all can relate? It was like somebody took a dagger and plunged it in my, she was like dancing with somebody, 
And you can tell when it's like that vibe, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when, like a regular day, I'm like, what they talking about? You know? And I was, ah! ah. It's like, it's, notice I put the dag in my own heart. Notice it wasn't them because they were too busy with each other. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't thinking about me or my dag. But, <laughs> how dare you not think about my dag? Okay. So, but I, that felt so horrible that the course was promising me I could get beyond that kind of fear and reaction. Mm -hmm. So I actually used it for motivation. Yes, right. mm -hmm. Rather than trying to change her or him, yes. I didn't even deal with that. Yes. Which, uh, see, the average person thinks that the way you would handle jealousy with your partner is for you to get them to not do the thing that made you feel jealous. Yes, right. mm -hmm. So then it becomes, you just don't dance with nobody else but me. And if you don't dance with anybody else but me for the rest of your life, and I can't even dance, uh, then you don't love me, right? So if you love me, you don't dance with anybody else but me. That's still making my peace totally dependent on something outside of myself. So I'm still jealous. You're just not triggering it, which means I haven't grown at all. You're just not triggering me. Does that make sense to everybody? So when you can get a person to modify their behavior just because it bothers you, while you're not trying to do anything about that behavior, you're not growing. No. There's one thing to say, I'm really afraid and I have issues with jealousy. When you dance with somebody, that's a challenge for me. How can we go past that together? And I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. different from, you just don't ever dance with anybody else right. for the rest of my life. Right. Which, which you'll be hoping won't be too long. <laughs> you know. So, again, we either use our relationships to speed us along, or we use our relationships to delay us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Either your relationship is saving you light years of time to peace, or it's slowing you down and you'd be better without it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you now, you, it's, it's only two things happening in any relationship you're in right now. It's either speeding you along according to how you look at it, yeah. or it's slowing you down according to how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no, there is no neutral. Cause the miracle said, there is no neutral place. Where you, you know, until you choose for love, you are in fear. Mm -hmm. Until you choose for peace, you are, there's no middle ground. Am I going to choose conflict or am I going to choose peace? Because now you're either in one or the other. Mm -hmm. right, right now sitting in this room, mm -hmm. you're either in peace sitting here mm -hmm. or you're not. Right. And, it's, and the Course says people are most more prone to listen to you when you're giving them an answer that involves what somebody else needs to do. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if I was telling you where you could go outside of yourself to get that love, to get that answer, to get that money, to, he said, then you have people's attention. But when you are saying what they need to do, the, the tendency is to go unconscious. Because now you're not giving me the answer the way I want it. So I'm going unconscious. I'm looking for you to tell me, where is the person on Tinder for tonight? <laughs> All right. More people than you could ever get around to will start showing up in your life than once you start feeling cool without them. Mm -hmm. Telling you, you want to have a lot of dates, be okay without one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You become magnetic. People will be drawn to you. So the Course in Miracles is saying, all this the Holy Spirit sees. Sees that we're doing the game of trying to make something that's real, that's not real. And then it says, so the Holy Spirit, which is love in you, teaches simply, 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 simply that all this is not true. To those unhappy learners, who are unhappy learners? Those who would teach themselves nothing and delude themselves into believing nothing is not nothing. See, I'm trying to delude myself into believing that my illusion is not an illusion, that my fear is not my fear, that my anger is not my anger. I'm always trying to convince myself that what is not true is what is true. You know, if, 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 if that's, what, that's what all of the challenges I'm trying, what does that mean? It means I'm holding you responsible for what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Just keep it simple. The ego wants to go, oh, you mean to give y'all a really complicated answer. Mm -hmm. I ain't giving you no complicated answers. He says right here, this is what you should say. The truth is true. Nothing else matters. Nothing else is real. And everything beside it isn't there. Sentence number one. 
and I, this is the way I did it to make it true for me, because this is my path. So what I said to myself was, the course is true. See, if, whatever your spiritual path is, be devoted to it. Stick to it. If this is your path, and there are many paths, but I say this is mine. So to make it more meaningful to me, I say to myself, the course is true. Nothing else matters. Nothing else is real, and everything beside it isn't there. The truth is true. Love is true. Nothing else matters. Nothing else is real. Everything beside love. If, if it's not love, this is what's so cool about it. If it's not love, it's not going to last. Yay! 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 If it's not love, it's not going to last. That's good news. It says it right there. Everything beside it is not there. So, so I'm thankful that relationships ended that were not based on love. Because I see too many people hanging in relationships that have no love. That's right. Because they think a relationship is two bodies being together under the same roof, even though their minds are miles apart. Mm. You're, not, you're not in a relationship with somebody just because y'all live under the same roof. Mm -hmm. that does, it's not a relationship. Two bodies being together. How much communication is going on without fear? Mm -hmm. That's how much the relationship is real. Mm -hmm. Is this your partner? Are you, are you afraid to tell them what you really think, what you really feel, what you really want, what you really value? It's funny to, to, to see people get in special relationships and say, and, and go, well, I'm not going to bring them to the course class. The, the course is my thing, but I don't say nothing about it. Okay, then why are you with somebody you're afraid to share the thing you value the most with, and then you're telling me you love them? Mm -hmm. That's your red flag right there, is you're afraid to communicate. Mm -hmm. That's your red flag immediately. You're afraid to communicate. The course says we join bodies to keep the minds apart. Like you need, to, we need to have a conversation. But I said, "Oh no, baby, let's just love on each other right now. Let's go to the movie. Let's go out to dinner. Let's make love." I'm trying to shut you up yeah. by joining bodies with you. Sometimes people send me pictures of of of. of, of, of Expressions on my face. <laughs> and they go, look at how you was looking at that. I said, oh my God. <laughs> I'm scared of myself. Oh Lord. I See, when I look, when I sometimes I get out the shower, I pass by the mirror and go, how'd you get in here? Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't look like I look in my own uh -huh. mind. Uh -huh. I'm permanently 25. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have, I, have an, I have an image of myself. Mm -hmm. and, I, and that image is everything to a part of me. Ego. Yeah, that's the ego. The ego, another term for the ego is self-concept. 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 And so it says, the truth is true, nothing else matters, nothing else is real, and everything beside it is not there. Let me, spirit, love, God, make the one distinction that you cannot make. But need to learn. <laughs> let, me, let me teach you a distinction. Let me make a distinction that you don't do very well, but that needs to be learned. You need to, you need to know when you're dealing with love and when you're dealing with something that's not love. You don't know how to tell the difference. And so the court says, what is the problem? Your faith in nothing is deceiving you. And the course defines nothing as illusion, fear, yeah. anger, mm -hmm. guilt, separation. It's deceiving me. My faith in that stuff is fooling me. It says, offer your faith, and this is a big, big, big point, offer your faith to me. I offer my faith to God. I offer my faith to the Creator. Whatever word works for you. I offer my faith to the universe. I offer my faith to love. I'm, I have chosen to have faith in love. I was telling somebody just the other night, I realized I thought love was weak mm -hmm. because I associated love with when I had experienced pain. Mm -hmm. So I thought love was strong. I thought love was weaker than attack, mm -hmm. that love is weaker than anger, mm -hmm. that love is weaker than, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's almost if I said I'm in love, I'm saying I am very vulnerable. Yeah. So I, I noticed that I wasn't associating love with power. Like, love could protect me. Yeah. Love could take care of me. Mm -hmm. And so now, uh, through my own personal work with the Holy Spirit, I've changed my mind about love 
because now I recognize it better than I used to. Because now I know what it isn't. See, if you really want to know what love is, the Course says you learn what love is by learning what love isn't. It isn't anger, isn't guilt, isn't attack, it isn't manipulation, it isn't. So, so when I see anybody attempting to do that or me attempting to do that, then I recognize in that instance there is no love happening, so pain can happen. So if you're with somebody and you know you feel fear, Anything can happen in that relationship. Anything can happen. It's unpredictable in its responses. You know, and sometimes the people we feel the most passion for are the ones we have the most conflict with and the ones we feel the most anger with because we confuse that with love. So you're going to go through a stage where it looks like you're not attracted to it by anything and nothing's really turning you on at all. Don't become alarmed, okay? It means you're moving to the real world where you're turned on by love as opposed to fear. But there is an in-between stage and you go, what the hell is going on? Yeah. You know, I'm not really attracting people like I used to. I'm not really turning me on the way. Yeah, you're not hurting yourself the way you used to and you're missing it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's really happening. You're not making the same old errors because some people's lives are so boring, they entertain themselves through the drama that they constantly create for themselves. That is literally their entertainment. They go to the same job every day. They don't have a whole lot of money. There's not a lot of love coming down yeah. in their relationships. So it's drama that makes their life interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to realize there's a part of you that may be addicted to Pain. drama. Yeah. Do y'all know some people that just always have drama yeah. yes. that you call drama kings and queens? Yeah. Yeah. They just got one thing after another thing after another. You say, like, my God, have you, do you have a crown? <laughs> Are you a drama king? Could you right now list about 15 things in your life that's going wrong that you have? And you're a drama king, a queen, and you're trying to do it by yourself. Yeah, yeah. If you weren't trying to do it by yourself, those problems would already have been solved, and you would already recognize those problems had been solved. That's how you know you're trying to do it by yourself, because you still think you have the problem. That's how you know. Just in case you wonder how you can tell. You have the problem, then you have it. Okay, you have help. This that you have help that's only waiting for the slightest bit of willingness for you to have the help to help you. So what do you do? You say, "I'm going to offer my faith to the Holy Spirit." It says it right here. Offer your faith to me, uh, and the course would say that that was the Jesus of the course, or the higher self, or your spiritual self, or your higher power. It says, "Offer your faith to me, and I will place your faith gently." in the holy place where your faith belongs. You got your faith in the ego. You got your faith in the outer. You got your faith in anger, guilt, fear, separation, the world, the teachings of the world, the learnings of the world. That's nothing. Let me place your love, says, let me place your faith where it belongs because you will find no deception there. Right. You won't be fooled there. Right. You only find what? The simple truth. That's what we've been hearing all day. The simple truth. And how will you know when you are finding the simple truth? And you will love it. So how can I tell when I'm in touch with the truth in you? I will love it. I will love you. And why will I love you? Why will I love it? Because I understand it. I love you because I understand you. What do you mean? I understand you want the same thing I do. You want love. And we realize we could give it to each other. We just don't listen to the part of us that believes what the world taught us, which is what's making us miserable. Yeah. So I will what find no deception in the truth, but only simple truth. I will find no deception when my faith is placed in what it should be placed in, but only the simple truth. And I will love it. Because I will understand it. Do you acknowledge yourself and hear this much Holy Spirit? Hey, come on now. Come on now. Lord have mercy. Mm. 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 So we are going to end on a special thing today to kind of hammer this in. And we're going to do the, uh, the love offering right now. The financial expression of appreciation. Thank you, 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 thank you,
Take them. Yeah. Hear me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those of you online, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And if you'd like to share the financial expression of appreciation, just go to my website, Earl Purdy, P U R O D Y, dot com, and you can do it from my homepage. Or if you use Venmo, you can just use my email address, which is a very easy email address, Earl Purdy at earlpurdy.com. Can't get more, more, more simpler than that. Yeah, my email is my name. Very complicated. Very complicated. That's, why, that's how you know this is real way you should deal because it's simple. Okay. <laughs> Easy. Uh, and I want to let those of you who are open to it, I am, I am available for one-on-one -on -one sessions that I can bring almost four decades of working with this stuff into your situation and show you another way that you can look at it because uh, the Court says, let me recognize the problem has already been solved. And that's what we do. We come together so you can see this problem has already been solved. You can't do it alone. So invest in yourself financially the way you invest in everything else. That's where I find people will hesitate the most is when they're investing financially with something that has to do with them. Other things just like that, cow. But them, then they go, well, that's too much. That's too little. It's like, no, you're worth it. And I'm worth it. Mm -hmm. I'm worth it. Mm -hmm. You got to start feeling that way about yourself. You're worth it. Mm -hmm. You're more than worth it. The Course in Miracles definition of little is anything you think of. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah. What is the Course in Miracles definition of anything I come up with? Because there's nothing I can think about myself that's worthy of me. I deserve more than I could ever come up with for myself. And you do too. You do too. So Facebook Live, Tuesdays, 7 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time, Earl Purdy page. Facebook Live, Thursdays, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, Hardcore Course and Miracles. And then Sunday, we have our live coming together. Thank you for coming together. That's why I do this class, so we can come together. Or it's like I can just do all of them online. But I want us to have this physical connection yes. with each other. It's some incredible beings around you. It's beings who have been through hell. <laughs> and, and who've been through heaven. And we're choosing now to go for the real deal on a more regular basis. Same thing with, the, with my mighty companions online. You know? So... I'm gonna, we're gonna, let us pray. Let us pray. <laughs> the truth is true. 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 Now, and those who will don't mind being a happy learner, those who don't mind playing the little bit, go the truth is true. Keep saying it. All those who want to. Nothing else matters. Nothing else is real. Everything beside it is not there. The truth is true. The truth is true. The truth is true. Let me make the one distinction for you that you cannot make. Let me make the one distinction for you that you cannot make. But need to learn, but need to learn, need to learn, but need to learn, need to learn, but need to learn. What is it? The truth is true. The truth is true. The truth is true. The truth is true. Your faith in nothing is deceiving you. Your faith in nothing is deceiving you. Offer your faith to me. 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 The truth is true. The truth is true. The truth is true. The truth is true. And I will place it gently in the holy place where it belongs. Is true. The truth is true. You will find no deception there. The truth is true. The truth is true. But only the simple truth. Only the simple truth. 
only the simple truth, only the simple truth, because truth is true, truth is true, the truth is true, the truth is true, and you will love it because you will understand it, you will love it because you will understand it, I will love it because I will understand it, I will love it. I will let's say it one time. The truth is true. The truth. Look at you. Look at everybody. The truth is true. 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 What would Elvis say? Oh, walla walla walla. The truth is true. Well, 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 well. The truth is true. Oh, well, 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 well. The truth is true. Yeah.